How's it going guys? In this video we're going to go over how to write electron orbital diagrams and we're going to go over a whole bunch of tricks to kind of uh, use the periodic table in order to, to kind of find your answers. Um, so really quick first we're just going to go over this uh, which is super important to know. Uh, the s orbitals all contain two electrons and when we're writing out the actual box diagrams it's just going to be one box. Each box will have two arrows indicating two electrons. Uh, the P will have 6 or 3 boxes, the D orbital will have 10, and the F orbital will have 14 electrons, so 7 boxes, each having 2. So you technically, if you have access to the periodic table, don't even need to memorize this because you can check it out right here. So for the, <coughs> for the S orbitals, uh, other than this very first one, you can kind of break it down to this column. Each of these has 2. And this is the s orbital right here. Uh, now over here we have the p orbital, uh, everything over here. And again, just if you disregard this, because that's one s two, uh, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you know each of these is your p orbitals. You can think of it that way. Uh, you don't have to remember the six. You can just remember three boxes each with two arrows here. Uh, and then the same thing for the d. It's just going to be this section here. And then for the F, uh, you know, and this has 10, and these down below have 14, uh, and it's going to have 7 boxes, because that's the F orbital. So that's kind of uh, one way to, to think about it. I think that the, the, the less you have to memorize, the, the easier sometimes. You can kind of, like, focus less on rope memorization and more on the actual technique and the, and the kind of the procedure of, of how to do these problems. So first off, we'll start with a, a really straightforward one. Uh, just nitrogen. <clears throat> uh, so this one we're going to start going through and uh, I can do it on the periodic table and then move back from there. Um, we know nitrogen is right over here. Uh, so we're, we're going to be in the first p orbital. So nitrogen is going to be 1s2, 2s2, and 2p3. So there's a couple ways you can go about this. Uh, one way is you can just look at, <clears throat> you, can, you can count these up. So 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and look at the atomic number. Nitrogen is 7. You can either work forwards or backwards there. So if you want to take the, the atomic number and then just keep writing these until you reach the, the amount, then you know do math along the way. That's one way of doing it. Another way is to just look again at this, we know that the nitrogen ends in the p orbital and it's the third one in, so it's going to be 2p3 and then just work up to that. Um, so now we'll do this with the boxes. We have the 1s, the 2s, and the 2 in the, in the uh, 2p. So I have, what is that, 1, 2, 3. <clears throat> so in the 1s we have up arrow, down arrow, two electrons. In the 2s, we have up arrow, down arrow. And then in the 3p, we have up arrow, up arrow, up arrow. And that's going to be like the picture diagram or the, you know, the box diagram, depending on what they call it. Um, <clears throat> and now we're going to start going through uh, to a little bit further down the periodic table. We're going to do uh, magnesium. Uh, but before we go to that one, I want to share one other little trick that I like to use uh, with these problems. It makes it a lot, a lot easier in my opinion. So if this is something that you're able to draw out, then it, it might be really useful to you. Um, <clears throat> it's just 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, 6x, 7s. And uh, this is mirroring the periodic table uh, in the order we write them in. Uh, so 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d. If you take one of these images and you make diagonal lines like this, it might seem complicated at first, um, but once you once you find like once you use this in a problem, you'll see that this really drastically simplifies how to look at these problems. And the more you can simplify it, I think, the, the, the less mistakes you're likely to make. Um, so again, that, that might seem confusing on first glance, but um, I'll show you how it works on this magnesium problem here. 
So first off, magnesium. Uh, it has an atomic number of 12, <clears throat> uh, and we're going to go into it like that. Uh, but say we, we don't even want to look at the periodic table, we just want to look at this, and we want to get to 12 that way. Um, first of all, we know that it's, it's um, 12, so here we go. We're going to start with the 1s, 2, and then follow the diagonal line. So next we're going to go to the 2s, 2. Get to the end of that, now start at the top of this one. 2p, 6, 3s, 2. And there's magnesium right there. So in that case, we just once we get to the end of the arrow, we start at the next line and the next line and the next line. It's going to get really, really helpful for the later ones. Uh, and, and I'll get to that in just a moment. So for now, we have the 1s, the 2s, the 2p, and the 3s. We have up arrow, down arrow, up arrow, down arrow, up, up up, down, 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 up, down. <clears throat> All right, great, now we're just gonna keep going through. And uh, in the meantime, I'll try to keep both of these in the, in the view, if I can. All right. So now we're gonna move on to number three, silver. We're going to be quite a bit further down now. Um, and like I said, there, there's a bunch of different ways we can go into this now. You can you, you can just count as you go, or you can use this chart. Um, but basically, yeah, I like to, to kind of just start counting up until I start to get close. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. And if you get lost, you can just reference this, 3s2. Now I'm going to start at the top of this, 3P and then 4S. 3P, 6. And then we're, we have 3P, 6, 4S, 2. I'll start on the next line. 4S, 2. We finish that line, then we go to 3D. 3D, 10. Because like we said, there's 10 electrons per D orbital. Um, so we just got to the 3D10, 4P6, 4P6, um, then we have 5S2, and then we complete with 4D9, because silver, if you block out this section here, it's one away from completing the next D orbital. Uh, and, and I think usually you won't have to draw out the box diagrams for all this, but just for the, the sake of anyone that wants to practice, I'll, I'll go through it really quick. Um, one, two, three. That's a 3S. 3P. Three 4S. And the D. One, two. Three, four, five boxes, 3D10. Then we have the 4P6. Five S2, and then we have the 4D10. And uh, whenever we're doing these, we know we can fill everything except for the last orbital. So just up, down, up, down, up, up, up. Down, 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 up, down, up, 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 down, 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 up, down, up, up. And we're just going to keep going through like that. And then for this last one, we just want to count to nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're just missing that one last electron. And uh, yeah, that's silver. <clears throat> now we're gonna keep going. Here we're gonna do uranium. And I think if you were to, to try to practice these, uh, other than just making the electron orbital diagram for every single element or like skipping and doing uh, various ones throughout the periodic table, 
I think that the best way to practice or get quickly good at these is just do a single electron orbital diagram for an element that's way far down on the periodic table, such as in this case uranium, which the atomic number is 92. Uh, and then we're just going to go through it. And in this case, w with anything um, that's that far down in, in the periodic table, that's when this chart here will come in handy. Uh, so let's just start start going through it. Um, so 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, then we have 3d10, and say we get lost here, 3d10, we just follow the red line, 4p6, 5s2, 4d10, 10 keep going we're at 40 10 5 p6 6 s2 7 p6 8 p6 9 p6 10 p6 11 p6 10 6p6, 7s2, and now that we're getting close, we can start to, to count it out. We're at 7s2, and then uranium is the third in on the second f orbital. So that is going to be the 5f right there, because we just finished the, 7F, uh, the 7s, and then we go to 5f3. And that's uranium. Um, now this is probably a good time to demonstrate the shorthand formula. Um, basically how it works is you just jump from the, the nearest um, <clears throat> noble gas. So for, for AG for instance, um, silver is here and we're just going to jump to uh, the most recent previous noble gas which is in this case going to be krypton. So over here we can call this Krypton, I'll say or Krypton, and then move from there. So Krypton will be um, it's one or it's a uh, the two p three p four p six. So we'll just find that over here four p six, and then we're gonna keep going. So five s two, and then four d nine. So the kr in brackets five s two four d nine is considered the shorthand formula. Now for uranium, we'll, we'll co go in and do the same thing. Uh, since it's we have to, to kind of watch out for these stars, um, uranium is on this row where 90 is the, the starting one. Uh, so it's going to be this row here on the periodic table, which means that the shorthand formula for uranium is going to be Rn for radon, 7s2, 5f3, picking up right from there. Okay, great. So uh, there's only one other thing I think that's probably necessary to go over really quick. Um, I'll move these out of the way just to get a little bit more room. Um, <clears throat> sometimes you'll get uh, electron formula problems where you have to do uh, charges. So we'll, we'll just go through a couple really quick. Uh, like Cl- minus is kind of like a common one. That's an anion. And basically what that means is, as I'm sure you might assume, uh, chlorine is here. If it's a minus charge, that means it gained one electron. Uh, so it's going to have the same electron formula or, or electron orbital diagram as argon in this case. So basically what we're going to do is draw what we have for chlorine and then just add one electron. So that's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6, not too bad. And finally, we'll wrap up with this one. See, we have aluminum 2 plus. So what does that mean? If the charge is a 2 plus, uh, we've lost two electrons, which means that instead of it being like aluminum, uh, the electron orbital diagram is going to be that of sodium. We just move two elements down. 
so although this is uh, aluminum, um, it's a cation that uh, we have the, an identical orbital diagram to Na. So we're going to just look at Na. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s1. And uh, yeah, that's that. Hopefully you guys uh, find this beneficial. That This chart here, like I said, I think it really helped me. Uh, my professor would routinely put like one question on quizzes or exams that would just be an orbital diagram of something really far down. Uh, and it's just... It's just good. If you know how to do the ones that are really far down, uh, you'll be more than comfortable solving the ones that are higher up. And uh, same thing with charges. It's just something good to keep in mind. Uh, if shorthand, if you're allowed to use it, uh, it definitely comes in handy because uh, you can imagine how much I had to write here compared to here. Uh, if you can use it, it's, it's a great asset to have. So yeah, uh, hopefully this helps someone.